Welcome back everyone to a new Botch But Works video. Today we're doing a project with Repair Kit. So basically what I have planned for this project is I want to cut a few patches in a certain design that I'm going to show you in a second on my laptop into this block of wood. Afterwards we're going to fill these um, yeah, channels and holes with repair care. Repair care is a special compound that's usually used for repairing broken pieces of wood. So for example window frames if some parts uh, are chipped off or have mold in them, then you can use repair care to basically repair the, the broken part. And repair care even kind of emulates the properties of the wood. So it's also flexible and will expand and contract with the wood. And you can even later on cut and sand repair care and it'll even form the same chips as your wood. Today we're gonna try something a bit different and we're gonna try to use repair care basically as a um, semi-transparent um, yeah, patch that we can backlight with a couple of LEDs. So after we've cut this design, filled it with repair care and have let it dry for a couple of hours, we're gonna flip the board around and we're gonna cut some channels for a few LED stripes and also a microcontroller. And if all goes well, we'll also include some touch sensors. This is gonna be the design. We're gonna be able to see from the front side. So it's a couple of circles and I tried to make them basically smaller when moving away from this axis. And this is basically the <laughs> concept for the finished design. Over here it's in Shaper Studio. So basically the circles and then on the back there's gonna be the channels for the LEDs the five spots for the touch sensors, microcontroller and a couple of channels for us to be able to wire everything up. We'll see. I hope that works. If the touch sensors don't work well through the residual wood, then we can just use the LEDs to create a nice uh, lighting effect, but that would be an absolute bonus. We're almost ready to start our cut. I'm gonna apply some shaper tape and scan our work surface so the shaper origin knows where it needs to cut. The design is already loaded onto the machine via USB stick and then I'm going to cut all of these holes. I'm gonna use an eight millimeter cutter for this. I base the entire design on the eight millimeter diameter and 35 millimeter length cutter from Shaper. So we should be able to cut these small circles pretty quickly. And then in the next step, we're going to move on and prepare the repair kit. Sweet, that was pretty quick and easy thanks to the Shaper Origin. If any of you don't know this tool yet, it's a handheld CNC device. So I basically do the coarse movements with my body and all the fine adjustments that I can precisely actually do while cutting are compensated for by the machine. It enables you to cut like large designs as well as these small things with much more precision than with hand tools. And if you're interested in learning more about the Shaper Origin and other projects that we've done here on this YouTube channel in the past, then you can check out our dedicated Shaper Origin video and get the whole picture about this amazing tool. Next, we're going to focus on the repair care. I'm not going to go into too much detail here. So if you're interested in learning more, then please check out their videos on the YouTube channel and on their website. What I have to do first is prime the wood. So we're going to mix up two components of this primer and apply it to the wood with a brush. I'm going to 
prepare the repair care compound. This is also a two component compound and it's pretty neat. You're gonna be able to see it both squeezes out of the same tube. The components have two different colors. So we're gonna be able to see pretty clearly if these are mixed up properly. Afterwards, if we've done everything correctly, we're gonna end up with an orange paste and apply that to these holes. There's different color pastes from Repair Care. They have different um, times that they need to dry. And it's also possible to color these uh, compounds with uh, different pigments and even give them an afterglow effect at night. But we're not gonna do that today because we already have the LEDs to give this an awesome backlight. Repair has dried for a couple of days. Now let's get started with sanding. I'm very satisfied with the results after sanding. There are a couple of small air bubbles in the repair care, but for my first time actually using the product, um, that is pretty nice. And I wanna show you something, a uh, little sneak peek if you will. If we just shine a flashlight into these pockets here, you can already see that they're lighting up pretty nicely. So I'm really looking forward to getting our LED backlight behind these repair care spots and then actually lighting it up all at once. Next step is going to be to flip the board around, tape it back down and start with the back side. So all of the channels for the LEDs and the sensors and the microcontroller. And I'm going to make use of a new feature in the Shaper Origin with the Larkspur update. And that is to touch off on this piece of wood because obviously we've moved it relative to our old tape board. And I'm just going to touch the board twice on the bottom side, once on the left side, once on the top side, and once on the right. And Origin is going to generate a rectangle for us that perfectly matches our previously milled board outline. And maybe it's even a bit smaller after sanding, but that doesn't matter after all, because we're gonna be able to get that shape into the shape of Origin with CNC precision. And then we're just gonna overlay the design. I preload it and start cutting with the channels. Let's go. Our workspace is set up now. 
and I'm going to start with the critical part and that is to determine how deep we need to cut until we reach the repair care and don't um, cut too much of the repair care away. With these circular pockets I'm gonna start with a cut depth of 20-21 millimeters and then edge my way forward until the whole pocket is basically filled with repair care that we applied from the other side. Afterwards I'm gonna cut these long channels for the LED stripes and hopefully they're gonna fit in there pretty well. Let's see. Cutting is done and the hard part now is going to be to get our workpiece off of the double-sided tape without breaking anything. Because in the five pockets where the sensors are going to go, I only left about maybe 0.5 millimeters of material standing. So that's basically a really thin sheet of wood and I hope we don't rip that apart um, while tearing the workpiece off. And I'm gonna be very careful while lifting it up and additionally I'm going to use a hot air gun to try and help the double-sided tape kind of peel off. Let's see how it goes. Wow, that effect is just amazing. Yeah, it's diffusing the light really well. Wow, this is gonna look so great with LEDs behind it, especially when we can't see these super thin sensor pockets anymore. Nice! Touch sensors and the LEDs are soldered to the Arduino Nano microcontroller. I haven't done any software on here yet, so this is just a dry power test. But LED pixels all seem to be working. Touch sensors are responding to touch. I hope they're still gonna work when they're installed in the wood because they have to operate through our super thin piece of wood. But uh, yeah, let's do a quick fitting test see how it looks behind our repair care nice yeah that's looking pretty cool of course we still have the yellowish tint of the repair care and the leds um, also have like a purple color right now um, but still it looks pretty yeah pretty warm white tint i really like it cool let's glue all of this in see if it works when it's installed
this project turned out at least as well as I'd hoped um, because I really wasn't sure would the repair care actually work the way I'd anticipated um, with the LED and touch sensor stuff all work but yeah I'm really happy with how it looks. I very much hope you enjoyed this project as much as I did. It was a mix between woodworking and electronics and also a bit of software and if you'd like to see more kind of mix projects like this in the future then please put it in the comments and I'll think about planning similar ones. That having been said, thank you so much for stopping by. Uh, if you're interested in more like lighting and pixel mapping stuff, um, I have a video about how I built my dorm room, which is also a music studio with a giant LED matrix um, on the top. We'll put the link in the description and um, if you'd like, you can check out um, how we did all the LED pixels in the ceiling, which is kind of a similar project like this one, just without the woodworking and the repair care. See you soon in the next Botchbit Works video.